Gene Genie by David Bowie and Jeepster by T-Rex and Ernie by Benny Hill, <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed to say. I still believe in God, but God no longer believes in me. I was brought up with the radio and things in the 60s and the Beatles and things like that, the Rolling Stones. But seriously, when I was about 14 or 15, after seeing uh, Mark Bolan on Top of the Pops, that certainly changed my life. He just had a lot of charisma and style, and the way he held the guitar was pure genius. And someone that can write the line, have you ever seen a woman coming into New York, New York City with a frog in her hand? Is yeah, stroke of genius. T-Rex in 1977, just before he died at Bristol Colson Hall. Uh, there wasn't that many there, but it was brilliant. He just came on stage and he had it. He was a star. He had this aura that was wonderful. What did you feel like when he died? I cried. Yeah, I can remember that very vividly. I was at, at work. I was cleaning kettles at the time. And uh, it was sad. It, it was like in a way, losing your innocence because you were brought up with these people and, and even though you, you never met them, you felt that you knew them through the, through the power of music and then all of a sudden, he wasn't there. It was like your childhood was over. It was quite frightening. I met Iggy Pop last summer we did a few shows with him in Europe and um, got on very well with him. It was a good bond group between us. Actually, it gave him a present in the end, which was nice. I wonder if he still got it. But, um, yeah, he, he was wonderful. I mean, he's such a nice, pleasant man, which is probably uh, not what you expect when you see him live. He's very energetic, but he, he's got so much peace of mind. himself to me actually and we I felt this tap on the back on my back so I turned around and he said hi hey, you're Wayne aren't you I'm Jim and sort of uh, made me very happy he said I've got your record I was very chuffed at that had he been your, one of your idols for a long time yeah yes from a long time I saw him, I first saw him back in 75 I think Bristol Colston Hall again that was, he put the fear of God into me, actually. I was only about third or second row. And he, he's very, he, was, he can be very intimidating on stage. And uh, I don't think I've ever quite got over that show. I am the passenger. And I ride. Jim Morrison was um, somebody that completely immersed himself in his performance. And that is a very difficult thing to do, and it's very rare. And that, um, there was some, something perversely appealing about the way he lived his life. Um, that's not to say that I, it's, I would condone it or advocate it for anybody else. But, um, no, he was a performer, a true performer. Led Zeppelin, uh, in my opinion, the finest band ever. I mean, they were uh, a real band in the sense that they, they went out and toured and they were, the records, so obviously, were the work of a band. 
I think the band was greater than any of the individuals. And there's very few bands around anymore. I think you two are a good band. I think we're a band. But in the accepted sense of the word, there's very few bands left. And I think Zeppelin were the finest. John Paul Jones has actually produced your LP. How did you get a contact and approach him? I think there was somebody playing Cupid for us, actually. And uh, I th the first time I met him was when we played uh, Ellen Road with uh, U2. He came up for that show, and we were pretty awful. <laughs> but I think he saw there was some good in us, and he wanted to do the LP. So it was something that would uh, either work really well or not at all, because he, he's had very little experience in producing. But uh, as it worked out, it was wonderful. He's, a, he's, a, he's another one that's um, I admire for his peace of mind, having been through all the excesses that Zeppelin went through. It's, he's a wonderful person. I had some very deep conversations with them, actually, about the use of drugs and stuff like that. And um, to the extent that I've now given up, or, yeah, as good as. And uh, it, it, when you're working in a studio, it, everything has to be very um, on the ball. You know, I think and you, you can't allow for your perspective to be changed that much. You have to be really together. And drugs don't allow you to do that. And so that's one thing I learned from him. I think performing is something that's very natural, yes. I don't think it's something that you can really develop. You've either got it or you haven't. Um, and I, all the people that I've talked about, I, I believe that they had it. And that's probably their biggest appeal to me, is the fact that they were performers, first and foremost. You raised me up. 